Michael Morris is a centrist nominee, won't move the needle. Uh-oh. So Team Rising is here to weigh in. Niambi Carter is an assistant professor of political science at Howard University and author of American Wild Black. And Philip Wegman is a political reporter for Real Clear Politics, two great friends of the show. It's great to see you guys. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. So we have this hilarious uh, this clip of Michael Moore. I think it set, set some of the centrist Democrats on fire on Twitter. He's talking on Democracy Now! warning about whether nominating a centrist again will go down in flames. Let's take a listen. 90,000 wanted to send a message to the Democratic Party. You forgot us a long time ago out here, and we will not put up with this anymore. We're not going to vote for Trump, but we're not going to—we're not going to tolerate you sending us another republican light Democrat. If we go that route, if we go that route, it's guaranteed we will lose the Electoral College. We will win when we put somebody on that ballot that excites the base. So it's interesting, Phil, because Michael Moore is actually one of the few people on the Democratic side who predicted a Trump victory in 2016. I mean, it's a pretty stark, uh, pretty stark message about Joe Biden at, at this point in the race. What did you make of this comment? Well, uh, another centrist yeah. again. I mean, <laughs> are we supposed to believe that Hillary Clinton yeah. was some sort of moderate? Mm. Uh, that's, a, that's a big pill to swallow there. Mm. Uh, I think that uh, Moore is, you know, voicing a, a frustration that a lot of the progressive left is, is having right now because they see a repeat of 2016, someone who's trying to, you know, run left during the primary, but mm. pull it back uh, to the center during the general. I think the opposite, though. I think what we're seeing right now is that there are a lot of people in the Democratic Party, a lot of the activists, a lot of uh, people who are really tuned in, uh, they want someone who is very progressive. But what do we see in the rest of the country? The rest of the country wants someone who's moderate. And that's mm. why, uh, you know, Joe Biden, who, you know, gaffes aside, has been very successful thus yes. far. There's no, no question. What do you think? I mean, to that point, Niambi, we are looking at the RCP national polling average. Joe Biden's got 27.5 percent of the vote. He's only lost 0.3 percent. So <laughs> his people are with him. He's got about a third of the Democratic base, and it may not be going anywhere. Yeah, I mean, I think it's hard when you live in D.C. and places like this. You think that everybody is like you, and you forget there's a whole other country out here. Sure. <laughs> and I think moderation actually does work for a lot of people, particularly when we start talking about middle America. But I think Moore's point about the youth vote is probably right on in the sense that young people are not interested interested in these centrist candidates, yeah. but young people aren't the people that show up reliably to the polls, mm -hmm. and I think that's something else we have to consider. So there's voting people's preferences, but there's also having those people who are going to show up for you consistently show up. And I don't know that the 1835 year old block is reliable enough mm -hmm. that Democrats will walk away from a moderate candidate like a Joe Biden. I mean, even black voters, Latino voters, I mean, people are looking at Joe Biden because they want the guy who can beat mm -hmm. the other guy, because this is real stakes here. So, yes, the leftist more progressive candidates may be interesting, but do they have enough gravitas to win the Michigans and the Indianas and the Ohios and the North Carolinas? I'm not sure. Mm. Give us the progressive fire back, Ryan. <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> I want to hear a little bit more about this idea that Clinton is a left winger, yeah. that Hillary Clinton was yeah. a left winger. She's pro war. Uh, she's, you know, close, close with Wall Street. She supported free trade deals, which I think hurt her a lot um, in, in the Rust Belt states. What? In, in, in what lens you have to view politics to see Hillary Clinton as a left winger? Mm, so, granted, she's very much a neoliberal, but there are 70,000 people in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania who absolutely, absolutely saw her as a leftist. We've been very familiar with the Clinton brand because, you know, Bill Clinton was. What do you mean, 70,000 people? Uh, the, the folks who broke the blue wall, who delivered, uh, who delivered those states for Trump. I think that um, the idea that Hillary Clinton was somehow a moderate uh, is, you know, about as uh, tolerable as the idea that Joe Biden. Biden now is somehow a moderate, a moderate by comparison, certainly, to the current field. Uh, but this is Hillary Clinton, who I think a lot of people on the right, a lot of people who are conservatives or even moderates would say, during a general election, no, this right. is not just a middle-of-the-road candidate. So if people want a middle-of-the-road moderate candidate, why is Donald Trump president? Well, certainly, yeah. I don't think that uh, it was an either-or situation there. Um, they, they didn't want a moderate in Donald Trump. They wanted someone who was going to burn the, burn the town down, and that's what he's delivered thus far.
Well, what do you think, Niambi, of, of this? Because it, it gets to the question of, like, moderation, what it is. I disagree a bit, Phil. I don't think that it's because she was a leftist. I think, it, if anything, she, it was more, you're right, it was about neoliberalism. And if anything, the break from her was not a break on cultural issues. It was on, you know, neoliberalism writ large and Trump's kind of rejection of that. But to your point earlier about moderation, mm -hmm. is it that people want moderation or is it that people think that the people who are in swing districts want moderation <laughs> so they're willing to swallow mm -hmm. moderation? Like, in other words, is this a self-fulfilling prophecy which is just waiting to be disproved in an actual election? Well, yeah. yes and no, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's a chicken or the egg issue, right? I think people are thinking about those folks in 2016 who said, you know, I'm going to do this protest or, or stay home, that they're actually thinking that a centrist will be able to pull those people in, right? Because, you know, this is the median voter theorem, right? Mm -hmm. Where you put yourself in the middle and you can grab people from, from both ideological sides, right? Yeah. Um, I think the 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 way we talk about politics, though, right, makes these candidates seem inevitable. So all we've been talking about is Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden. He's a front runner. And I will say this, like I say all the time, mm -hmm. nobody's actually won anything. Yeah. No. Nobody's actually competed for anything at this point. And so to the extent that, that Joe Biden has, has, has kind of emerged mm -hmm. as the candidate of choice for Democrats, um, we don't know yet. Right. But he does have a record that people know. He's been around for 40 plus years. He's been a vice president. And I think at this point, folks are thinking about who can actually beat a Donald Trump. Mm. Right, because Donald Trump is everything that we never anticipated, right, about our electoral system. And I would disagree with Phil as well yeah. that he has burned down the swamp. I think, mm -hmm. if anything, he has sort of tended the swamp well, he ran and helped to, to grow it. He right. He certainly ran, I, I, ran I, I, he, he, yeah. uh, Donald Trump has done very little to drain the swamp. But I think that you absolutely diagnosed the, the problem correctly here. If yeah. there was a national primary, well, then it'd be all over. Mm. Joe Biden would be the nominee, but there's not. If you look at Iowa and New Hampshire, uh, he's, he's trailing there. He's also tied in California. Mm. Uh, until you know, voters actually go to the ballot box. I think a lot of this, to your point, is a sort of public perception yeah. polling right now. Things are going to change as soon as we finally get uh, some results. I want to pick up on something you said and get your yeah. get your reaction to it. You talked about the, this, the the voters who moved in one direction or another, and there's a ton of focus on people who voted in 2012 for Obama and then 2016 they mm -hmm. they swung over to Trump. But analysis shows that just as many people who voted in 2012. Uh, for for Obama in 2016, either voted third party mm -hmm. um, or or kind of sat it out, mm -hmm. and a lot of those came back in 2018 uh, for Democrats. So the argument would be, focus on those people, focus on the people who went Obama and then went elsewhere, but not to Trump. Yeah, I mean, and you'll incidentally pick up the non-racist ones. Who, yeah. from, <laughs> well, right, thank you for right, saying right, that. Right, right. Um, but, yeah. but no, I do think that, I mean, one of the things that we saw, at least, is that the folks who folk picked a Trump are probably not coming back right. because that's right. such a big gap, right? To, to make the decision to vote for Obama once or twice and then sort of cast this protest vote for Donald Trump, I don't think those folks are coming back. But I do think the people who were demobilized, and that happened a lot, Right, um, people who just said, "I'm not interested in any of these people. I'm going to sit home," or that Hillary Clinton is such an inevitability. I don't have to show up. Right, she's going to win. Right. I think those people have a lot more at stake here, and we saw it in 2018 because we saw people show up for midterm elections in numbers we've not seen in a yeah. really long time. So I think people recognize the stakes. Yeah. Sitting it out or throw, voting for a third-party candidate may not be the route if you want to protect yourself. So Phil, what I th so what that point is is that. There's two ways to win. You could try and get Obama Trump voters back, mm -hmm. or you could try and drive out new coalitions. I mean, that's kind of what the Bernie Sanders theory of the case is. What do you do? You think that that is an actual viable way to win? Well, I mean, that, that is what Trump did, right? I mean, what yeah. Bernie Sanders is doing right now is mm -hmm. defying expectations. I mean, Bernie Sanders uh, again and again gets overlooked by the national media, and yet he is uh, he's very competitive, not just in individual states. Instead, it's a reverse of 2016, where he had a sort of insurgent campaign. Now he has the infrastructure, and he's competing everywhere. Um, you know, not just Iowa and New Hampshire, but also California. I think that he has the staying power to make a real bid here. Uh, and frankly, look, his message, uh, it's one that a lot of people in the, the Democratic primary uh, find persuasive. Even if he doesn't win, he has shifted the field so far left that his ideas are going to be the ones that the Democratic Party is duty-bound to try and enforce. That I agree with. Let's hold that thought for the next uh, block. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Stick around, and we're going to take a quick break.